Uh, LifePath is a large network of researchers in Europe. Uh, we have put together millions of people to, to study, to investigate about uh, social inequalities. And I would say that uh, the most amazing finding from my point of view is the consistency of the findings, because whatever we look at, uh, we find uh, um, strong inequalities uh, in health uh, uh, when we look at mortality, when we look at uh, walking speed, uh, functional outcomes, uh, but even uh, uh, microRNAs, uh, uh, metabolism, uh, molecular pathways. Uh, so this is one of the messages uh, we, we come up with, uh, uh, that is uh, social inequalities are really embodied uh, in our bodies uh, uh, through molecular mechanisms as well. Life path has increased our understanding of the social gradient in health and mortality and life expectancy and the biological pathways, which helps us to establish causation. I began, though, with a major issue and asked the question, how much can this understanding help us understand this major issue? And the major issue is that when we compare the period, the five years after the financial crisis and before, right across Europe, the rise in life expectancy slowed down. In the UK, we were the worst in Europe in terms of the slowing of life expectancy. And in the constituent countries of the United Kingdom, in England, the life expectancy rise more or less ground to a halt. In Northern Ireland, it was declining in men, life expectancy declining in men. In Scotland, life expectancy declining in men and women. In Wales, life expectancy declining in men and women. So in the more deprived parts of the United Kingdom, life expectancy was declining. And the inequalities by levels of deprivation were increasing. So this is a major problem. In other words, the research we're doing in Life Path is not only interesting, and it is interesting, but we need then to say, how can our understanding of the drivers of inequalities in health help us understand the major crisis in health that's facing particularly the United Kingdom, but to a lesser extent, what's been happening in other European countries? Lower educated people live shorter lives than higher educated people. The difference is in the order of uh, three, four, five, six years, depending on the country in which you live. And in the Life Path project, we have calculated uh, how many of these years are accounted for by differences in a number of specific risk factors. And what we found is that the three most important risk factors uh, determining these inequalities in life expectancy are in order of importance uh, smoking, low income and high body weight. The European Union in the last health program has decided to launch a new joint action to invest on health inequalities, on how to reduce health inequalities. And uh, life path results are brilliant contribution for trying to move from science to practice, because this is the specific commitment of the European Union, how to change the possibility and the capacities of 25 member states that have joined the joint action to elaborate a, a new policy response for reducing health inequalities. So all the inputs of the life by messages are essential for trying to translate no, new knowledge on mechanisms uh, on how health inequalities are generated into specific entry points for actions, policies and intervention. And this will be the main uh, concern of these 25 ministries of health that have joined the action to uh, uh, make uh, active and uh, concrete actions for reducing health inequalities. Over the past years, we have done a lot of research on mechanisms explaining social inequalities in health uh, using data from Europe, but also all around the world. And, um, 
I think we really, so in, in part we confirmed previous research, but we also built a lot of novel findings on especially biological mechanisms linking socioeconomic position across the life course and health outcomes. And I would say that one other very important result of LifePath is the construction of this network of researchers on the social determinants of health that I really hope will be, will make possible to do future research in the next 10 years or even more. In uh, LifePath, we took an interest in the social to biological um, processes over the life course. So with regards to timing of events and timing of these socio social to biological processes, we would have three main messages. The first one is that there's evidence that in emerging adulthood, so late adolescence and early adulthood, we're getting an amplification of effects that may be worth further research and potential intervention for that age group. Um, second of all, we know from the childhood work that we took, but that we undertook, that uh, these processes, these social to biological processes, start almost immediately in childhood, where children are biologically adapting to their social environments. So that's a second key message. And finally, uh, we know that educational attainment and the educational process contributes significantly to, um, to the social to biological processes and is a potential buffer um, against the adverse effects of the stressful socioeconomic environment. So one of the uh, novel and uh, ambitious goals of LifePass was to investigate what were the uh, biological mechanisms involved in the um, social embodiment. And to do this, there was a, the, the, the project was fa faced some um, methodological, methodological challenges and uh, to uh, embrace this challenge, it compiles a large diversity of data sets which were successfully analyzed and that were able to first provide strong evidence and strong support for the socially uh, driven gradients in health and then uh, by looking into more uh, uh, high dimensional data sets and using complexity reduction approaches, we were able to link these changes to health and try to and identify actually some mechanisms that were involved and in, uh, um, that, that uh, included inflammation as a primary target as well as other uh, physiological systems and we were even able to uh, grasp at a much finer resolution which uh, molecules would have been affected by social experiences in the life course. We wanted to uh, assess the potential effect of uh, policies in different times uh, during life and we, uh, using micro simulations uh, models and um, data from uh, French and British cohorts, we could see that uh, policies focusing uh, early life, for example, uh, policies on education and policies on adverse childhood experience could have uh, effects that could be as large as effects on policies later in life, for example, uh, focusing on smoking during adulthood. Uh, and we could also see uh, in some examples that uh, these uh, early life policies could also reduce health inequalities in uh, health social inequalities. LifePath has produced consistent research that shows that we need to reduce social inequalities to support healthy ageing. We've identified many of the policies and strategies that would actually achieve this, but in many countries across Europe, either those policies don't exist or they're actually not being used anymore or implemented, so for example by cutting social housing. The next steps, moving on from here, are to identify the kinds of barriers to those policies and implementation of those policies and how to really break through those barriers. As someone who's not been part of the LifePath study but has been invited to talk with people from LifePath, it's wonderful to see they're taking so seriously the notions of embodiment and pathways of embodiment to understand how the social and biophysical world that we live in becomes part of our biology and shapes people's health profiles and shapes the population profiles and the inequities that we see. And the evidence that they're trying to pull together is to make those connections between the ways people are able to live because of what their states are, what their policies are, how that affects their physical environs, their social environs, is really important because it adds to the evidence that's needed to understand that this is not a fact of nature, that there are health inequities. It's a fact of the social nature of the world that we live in and the impacts that we have on the social and environmental components, including as now related to the crisis of global climate change, 
that goes on all the way down to the micro effects that happen within people's households and the neighborhoods that they live in. So Life Path is trying to give evidence that pulls these pieces together and to provide a basis for understanding that what's inside of us in terms of our biology is heavily conditioned by the world that we live in and above all by the body politic. 